Good morning, everyone. Thank you for your kindness and your warmth. As daunting as it is standing up here in front of hundreds of people, you've all made me feel very welcome. The premature passing of the late Don Randall has created the need for a by-election in Canning, and I am humbled to be chosen by the Liberal Party, and I hope the people of Canning will allow me to carry on his work and represent the local community with the same vigour and determination. I am aiming to fill some pretty big shoes. Over the past two weeks, I've spoken with a lot of Canning locals, and one theme stands out very clear. Don embraced Canning, and the people of Canning embraced him. His 11.8% margin at the 2013 election was testament to his charisma, drive, and personal connection with the people of Canning. This margin was quite remarkable when you consider that Don came to this electorate from the outside after being the member for Swan from 1996 to 1998. And then defeated Labor challenges in all five subsequent general elections. It underscores Don's commitment and hard work that he was so highly respected by people from all over Canning. The support of his wife and family should also not be underestimated. This election will be about the people of Canning and who can represent and fight for them like Don did. This is not a general election. The result will not change the government. It is about who will be the best representative of the people of Canning and who will stand up for them. I respect the people of Canning. The fact that we have Labor and others out there trying to use local residents to treat the by-election as a chance to kick the PM or campaign for the solar industry is disgraceful. It shows a lack of respect for people's personal issues. It says to the people of Canning, we don't care if your main worry is law and order and the scourge of ice. We don't care if what you want most is jobs to be created through infrastructure projects. Instead, we want you to play our game and deliver political benefits to us, not you and your community. What the by-election should be about is residents choosing a person who has the drive, honour, integrity, leadership, compassion and the strength of character to serve others. It's about electing someone who will listen, learn and deliver. It's about electing someone who could be part of the community. Labor's likely candidate, or in fact now candidate, uses very carefully crafted, tricky political lawyer speak. You won't get that from me. <laughs> the guys I've worked with the last six years wouldn't tolerate it, and I know the Australian people won't. It's true, while serving the Australian people in the SAS, I lived where I needed to, in defence housing close to the base. The sad reality is that when you serve in the army, you are not local anywhere. But I want to be, as does my wife. I've resigned from the defence force and, as a result, effective yesterday, I'm moving out of defence housing. I'm thrilled that this weekend, my wife Ruth, along with my seven-week-year-old son, Jonathan, are moving into our new family home in Dudley Park in the Canning electorate. And I should thank my brother who flew over here at the drop of a hat to help with that removal. <laughs> I'm looking forward to becoming part of the community and hopefully following in Don Randall's footsteps to represent local families and businesses. I was born in regional Victoria in a town called Wangaratta. My father started a church there from scratch in 1980 and I travelled with him in my early years around the vast parish that fell in the federal seat of Indi connecting with people from all walks of life, in homes, hospitals, on farms and on fruit orchards. I have sweet memories of those times with my father. For 16 years he drove around in a tiny yellow mini miner and I remember the countless hours talking while keeping my feet up when it was raining because there'd be a puddle on the floor. <laughs> Later in my teenage years my friends referred to him as Mr Bean. <laughs> My family later moved to Sydney and together with my two sisters and younger brother, I finished my schooling there. It was there that I spent time with my grandfather learning of his World War II service where he gave of himself under fire in the service of others. That story has always captured my respect. Growing up, I was very close to my grandmother Rose. She was a nurse her whole life and looked after my grandfather until he died. She was a real character who bowled at her local club until her mid-80s. I remember she always had a beer in the fridge 
and that was something that my mates and I would take advantage of sometimes. <laughs> my high school years were pretty normal. In my head, I wanted to be a real estate agent, journalist or a sports scientist. I played sport like everyone. I tried my hand at football, rugby, bodyboarding and rowing. Had we stayed in Victoria, I might have had a decent go at Aussie rules. Alas, I doubled, dabbled unsuccessfully with rugby. When I finished high school, I went to the University of New South Wales to study philosophy, politics and history. During this time, I worked as a barista at Gloria Jeans, so I know how to make a decent coffee. <laughs> I also manned the tills at Rebel Sports selling treadmills and was a groundskeeper at a nursing home in Pitwood in Sydney. A change in my life's direction happened on the 12th of September 2001. I remember sitting in a university tutorial on the day after the terror attacks in the United States and listening to people my age blame the attacks on the USA, not the terrorists. For me, the lights went out. I had to join the military as my grandfather had done. I transferred to the Australian Defence Force Academy and Royal Military Co College Duntroon, where I finished my education, earned my degree, and completed my officer training. Over the years, I have trained and attained the rank of captain in the Special Air Service Regiment, having served as a troop commander with a team of 30 soldiers. My tasks have included leading sensitive strategic operations on behalf of the Australian government in Afghanistan and elsewhere. In the role in Afghanistan, I commanded tactical actions and I had to make decisions that meant literally life and death. I've also led a team in the Middle East as part of coalition operations against Daesh. The Australian Defence Force has invested a large amount of public money into my training as a leader. I've been taught how to build a team. I've been taught how to identify a problem, create a solution and then get the job done working closely with those alongside me. These are all the things that I hope and expect the people of Canning would have in their local MP. I've always sought to represent the best in interests of my troops and believe me, SAS troops are the most demanding constituents an officer can ever expect to lead. Whether finding better housing arrangements for a soldier with a pregnant wife or making sure that my soldiers have the right equipment on operations. I have not been afraid to ruffle feathers on their behalf. I have stood by them in some of the most trying and difficult moments on tour in Afghanistan, and I am no stranger to accepting responsibility. But please don't believe that leading troops is all about shooting targets and killing baddies. Leading 30 men to a war zone is about caring for them and their families, all in a high-pressure environment. I met my lovely wife Ruth on a trip to the USA and luckily for me she followed me back to Darwin and now Perth. Between both our families we have 14 nieces and nephews and they are an absolute joy. In our church group Ruth and I volunteer to look after young children to give hard-working and busy mums and dads who otherwise barely get any time to themselves the chance to take a break without worrying about their kids. We've been married for seven years and have been trying to save up to buy our own home. We have often talked about making a home and a family of our own. One of my happiest days was late last year, when I was on the ground in the Middle East, only having been deployed for about four to six weeks, and I received an email from Ruth, which had a positive pregnancy test as the only thing in the email. <laughs> After many years of struggling with that, it was a wonderful moment for us. The most profound influence in my life has been my family. I've grown up in a stable and loving envir environment given to me by my parents. I love my family and I love my country and want to do my best to make it a better place for everyone. I've seen the best and worst of human nature in conflict. After deploying three times to Afghanistan, where power and violence regularly intersect, I've come to appreciate the unique conditions of liberty that has led to the flourishing of Australian society and our system of government. So you may ask, why Parliament? I care about the direction of Australia. I care about the future generations of Australians who will face a large tax bill if we don't get the ship back on course. I want to preserve the institutions and cultural heritage that has made Australia and our way of life possible. Labor has shown 
that they will deface our national achievements with bad policy if given the opportunity. In short, I want to protect the Australian way of life and the best way I can see of doing that as I build my family is to represent my local community in Parliament. I know from experience that nation building at, a point, at the point of a gun can have limited effectiveness and in Afghanistan I did not feel that the, the, Len, the then Labor government had our backs. That feeling led me to properly understand the importance of strong, competent, strategic government. And make no mistake, I will be dogged in my pursuit. Prime Minister, please know that while I support our Liberal government, if elected, the women and men of Canning will be my first priority. And with, and with respect, you will never be in doubt about that. <laughs> I will take my lead from Don Randall. <laughs> there was never any doubt on where he stood on issues important to him or his electorate. As the Liberal for Canning for 14 years, the late Don Randall proved that with the right level of commitment and care for the community, and by working extremely hard, you can, be, you can become part of that community. Many of you have shared stories about Don's commitment. You have told me stories of how Don demonstrated that the little things, the small details, matter. That attention to details in the lives of individual constituents can and does have an impact. One of Don's great strengths as a local member was that he served so many people in his electorate on a personal and individual basis. He did things for people that they never forgot. Don's example of looking after his electorate on a very individual and personal basis was Leadership 101. What will be important is how I deal with and work on the local issues. What counts is my ability to deliver solutions for the people of Canning by understanding their problems. I have already started this process. Over the past two weeks, I have been travelling through Canning and a clear picture of the issues and challenges for its residents has emerged. Issues like the need for jobs, the scourge of ice and drug-related crime, black spots on mobile phone coverage, local fruit growers competing with imports, the need to prote protect fruit against pests like fruit flies, the extension of the Tonk Tonkin Highway, Denny Avenue traffic issues in Kelmscott and many others. While I may not be across all the detail now, what I can say is that if I'm elected, local, local residents will have a representative who will listen to their concerns and deliver solutions to their problems. One issue that has kept popping up is the scourge of ice in our communities, especially in Armidale and Mandurah. In the South Metropolitan Police District, which takes in much of Canning, there were 4,928 drug-related crimes recorded in 2014-2015. This is a problem that needs a robust law and order approach as well as a compassionate community solution. Locally, we need to understand that many users have significant addiction and mental health challenges, and this is where we need to provide support both to addicts and their families. This problem affects everyone. Drug, drugs, ice especially, are one of the biggest threats to the Australian way of life, both nationally and locally in Canning. Just on Monday, I was outside Armidale Hospital meeting people and a young guy by the name of Andrew came up to me and he told me with deep passion, he's about 18 months into his rehabilitation, and he said that law enforcement isn't enough. We need a compassionate community solution and I heard that loud and clear. Together we can do something about ice and canning. I will seek to bring in law enforcement, counsellors, community services, educators and get them all working together. There are many well-meaning responses that are disconnected and uncoordinated. This is where I can put my training in the Defence Force to good use. I'd like to now turn to a matter you may have seen or heard in the media this morning. Going into this campaign, I took a position that I was not going to talk about operational matters. However, given reports into certain incidents involving troops under my command, and the Taliban we were fighting, 
it is important that I clarify a few things. Firstly, in my time in the Defence Force, like me, everyone I served with conducted themselves with honour and integrity. Secondly, not everything goes to plan in any aspect of life, let alone in a high-pressure war zone where people are trying to kill you. Thirdly, it is true, as reported, that I wasn't at the scene of the incident when it happened. I was, in fact, above and away in a helicopter orbiting overhead. When I became aware of what occurred, I did what, was what I was required to do and promptly reported the incident up the chain of, the, of command. I can say with great confidence that those soldiers involved directly with the incident were acting in what they believed to be the appropriate process laid out by defence. As the then Defence Force Chief David Hurley said, we were engaged in a high-intensity, complex and dangerous battle. It is critical when you are fighting the Taliban that you gather evidence and do what you can to investigate the precise identification of your enemy. This leads me to the investigation. This matter was dealt with by an inquiry office inquiry and my actions at the time were appropriate. All but one of the troops was cleared. The investigation was launched after the issue was raised up the chain of command and it was raised by me. The investigation into this single soldier has taken two years and four months and it has not yet been finalised. As reported, there are differing views as to whether the incident constituted a breach of the rules of war. People who serve put their lives on the line to protect our country. I've always stood up and fought hard to represent the troops I lead, and if that requires ruffling a few feathers, I've done that, and I'm going to do that again now. Out of concern for the soldier involved, I'm disappointed that my candidacy has brought this issue to the forefront of media attention. The least we can do for that honourable soldier is to ensure that the investigation into the incident is done fully and quickly. This issue has cast a shadow for almost two and a half years over this man's life, and I believe the Defence Force has a duty of care to finalise its investigation more quickly. Yeah. I have now left the Defence Force with a clean slate, having defended our nation against the Taliban and Daesh. I'm now taking the skills I learned in the Army and, if elected, will use them to be the best representative for the people of Canning. I have not lived my life—excuse <coughs> me—I have not lived my life behind a desk pushing paper and talking about the concepts of freedom and democracy. I have acted. I have put my life on the line for this country and for that freedom. I have led under pressure and worked with honour, integrity, compassion, and diligence. I have the strength of character to stand up for what and who I believe in. I have the experience and the training to deliver for the families and businesses of Canning. I have chosen to start my, my new life with my young family, living in the electorate, and I will strive to make Canning the best it can be. Thank you. Thank you.